All right, so this video here is for the Rotational Dynamics Practice Problems Worksheet, and these are going to be the solutions. So let's get started here. A person exerts a horizontal force of 32 newtons on the end of a door 96 centimeters wide. What is the magnitude of the torque if the force exerted A, perpendicular to the door, and B, at a 60 degree angle to the face of the door? So this is going to be just a reminder, like the torque practice problem is a basic, um, uh, what's called, just torque problem. So if we remember, torque is equal to R theta. Uh, for part A, it's given perpendicular to the um, door. So it's going to be sine of 90, which basically just makes it 1. Uh, so we can just write it as RF. I plug in here, I know my R is 0.96 meters, so you gotta convert that. And then the force is 32 meters. So all you have to do here is multiply, and you should get somewhere around 30.7 newton meters. Okay. B, the force is the same, but now it's no longer perpendicular, it's acted at an angle. So the torque is gonna be less, because remember, the maximum torque is put it as far away from the axis point and directly perpendicular. So let's go ahead and use this equation here. R F sine theta. I plug my numbers in here. R is again 0.96. The force is again 32 newtons. And then I got sine of 60 degrees. So I plug that in and do that in your calculator. You get 26.6 newton meters. Uh, the problem is pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Uh, just kind of like a reminder of uh, you know what uh, what what we did last worksheet. Number two it says determine the amount of inertia of a ten kilogram sphere of radius 0.648 meters when the axis of rotation is through its center. So what we're looking here for is uh, the moment of inertia, so I. And we're looking for a sphere with rotating through its center. So a sphere rotating about its center. So if you look that problem, if they get would give this to you on an AP test, they would have to give you the equation. You can look it up in the notes. We know that a sphere is equal to two fifths uh, m r squared. Uh, this one again is pretty straightforward. It's just knowing what you're looking for here. You can plug in I equals two fifths. The mass is 10.8 and the radius is 0.648 squared. Put that in your calculator and you get 1.81. Again, pretty easy, pretty straightforward, just getting used to uh, what's called getting used to the terminology again from the first worksheet. All right, so let's go ahead and clear this. Number three. So let's read it. A potter is shaping a bowl on a potter's wheel, rotating at a constant angular speed. The friction force between her hands and the clay is 1.5 newtons total. A, a how large is at her torque on the wheel if the diameter of the bowl is 12 centimeters. Uh, B, how long would it take for the potter's wheel to stop if the only torque acting on it is due to the potter's hand? The initial angular velocity of the wheel is 0.16 revolutions per second. Or, I'm sorry, 1.6 revolutions per second, and the moment of inertia of the wheel on the bowl is 0.11 kilograms meters squared. All right, so, what we got? We got diameter is 12 centimeters, so that's going to give you my radius is 0 0.06 meters. So cut it in half and then convert it to meters. For A, it's pretty simple. We got to find the torque. It wants us to know the torque. Well, if we know she applies it on the outside of the bowl, I can use this equation here that torque is equal to RF. R is 0 0.06, the force, uh, what's the force you can say? 1.5 newtons. 
So if I plug that in my calculator, I get 0 0.09 newton meters. So that's A. B says, what am I looking for? How long? Uh, so we have the torque here. We know I is 0 0.11 kilogram meters squared. Uh, what we know is that we can find angular acceleration. Once we find angular acceleration, we can then figure out the time. So I remember this, summation of the torques has to equal angular acceleration times uh, moment of inertia. So I know they said the key to this is that her hands are the only torque on it. So the only torque is going to be this 0 0.09. So I got 0 0.09 equals. Alpha I don't know. I is 0.11. So I can find alpha to be, once I solve for it, 0.82 per second squared. So that gives me the angular acceleration. Now what I know is, that when we want to know how long it takes to stop, so its final velocity is going to be zero. The initial velocity, what's the initial velocity here? 1.6 revolutions per second. So, you got to convert here. So, one revolution equals two times Revolutions cancel out, and when you plug it in, you get 10 radians per second. We know alpha is gonna, so it's gonna be slowing it down, right? Cause it's, it starts at 10 and then ends at zero. So this is gonna be the negative 0.82. I'm looking for 10. So I can use this equation here. So final velocity is zero equals 10 plus negative All for T here, you get 12.2 seconds. Okay, pretty straightforward. Um, I had a bunch of stuff in there. Let's see, clear. Number four, a softball player swings a bat, accelerating it from rest to two. 0.7 revolutions per second in a time of 0.2 seconds. Approximate the, the bat as a 2.2 kilogram uniform rod of length 0.95 meters and compute the torque the player applies uh, on one end. So again, what you're gonna need to do is, this is a rod, you're gonna assume it's a uniform rod and it's gonna be rotated about one end, not in the middle, that's the key here. So the first thing I need to do is calculate the moment of inertia, which is pretty easy. Rod at n. So again, you're going to be given this equation if it's on the test, but you can always just look it up. The mass is, what is it, 2.2. The length is 0.95 squared. And you're, when you put it in the calculator, you get 0.66 kilograms meters squared. That's your moment of inertia for the rock, okay? Um, so the next thing we can do is, if we're looking for how much torque her hands have to apply to the rod to get it to accelerate, or to get it to have a final speed in that much time, what we need to do is figure out the acceleration. Right? And then if we know the moment of inertia, we have the acceleration, we can figure out how much torque it requires to do that. So it says it starts from rest, so it's zero. The final velocity is what, 2.7 revolutions per second. We convert that to radians per second. I'm not gonna do it again, 16.9 radians per second. It is 0.2, and I'm looking for angular acceleration. I can use the same equation we did last time. Again, uh, my final is 16.9. My initial is zero, goes away. 
alpha is what I'm looking for, time is 0.2. I get 55.9, or no, I get 84.8 per second squared. All right, so there's our angular acceleration. It wants to know torque, so remember that torque is equal to angular acceleration times moment of inertia. We know the only force on the bat is our hand, so we can just find the torque here. So torque equals uh, is 84.8, I is 0.66, torque is then going to be equal to 55.9. That is a torque that the hands exert on the bat to get it to accelerate that final velocity. All right, let's see what we got here. Next problem, clear this. Number five. All right, let's see what it says here. A grinding wheel is a uniform cylinder with radius 8.5 centimeters and a mass of 0.38 kilograms. Calculate A, its moment of inertia about its center, and B, the applied torque needed to accelerate it from rest to 1,750 revolutions per minute in five seconds. If it is known to slow down from 1,500 revolutions per second to rest in, five point, or in 55 seconds. So what that last part is telling me is that there's actually friction that slows this wheel down if left with no power, okay? So we're gonna have to include that in our calculation. So the easy thing to do first is, let's see, it says uh, radius is gonna be, uh, what's it at, 0 0.085 meters. The mass is gonna be point uh, so I got a cylinder that rotates about its center. So that I is going to equal, and again, they're going to give us you one half m r squared. I can plug in mass is 0.38, r is 0.85. 0.085 squared. Plug that in your calculator and you get 0 0.00137 kilograms meters squared. So A was easy. That was it. Right? So now what B says is this. It's asking us apply torque needed to accelerate from rest. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is kind of figure out what acceleration is required to accomplish that. So again, that's pretty straightforward again. We know that it's gonna start from rest, so our initial velocity is gonna be zero. Our final velocity is gonna be 1750 rev minute. So one minute, 60 seconds. One revolution, two pi radians. So when I do that, I'm going to get 3.3 radians per second. Does it give us a time? Yes, time. Five seconds. We need to know acceleration here. So again. Okay, so I got final is 183.3. Initial zero equals uh, five seconds. I get the required angular acceleration is going to be uh, thirty-six point. Oops, sorry, sorry, sorry. Six 
6.66 radians per second squared. All right, so that's the acceleration that we need to have for this. To, now what we need to figure out is what acceleration is caused by friction. And it gives us some information. It's saying if it was going at 1,500 RPMs and it was just shut off, right, it would slow down and eventually stop due to friction. So what I got is the initial is 1,500, right, is that right? Yeah. Revolutions per minute, which I'm not converting again to the same steps, which equals, uh, it looks like 157 radians per second. The final velocity is going to be equal to zero, comes to stop, and it takes 55 seconds for that to happen. Now, if we can find alpha, we'll know how much angular acceleration is caused by uh, the friction of the wheel. All right, so I got final, initial, final zero, 157 plus alpha, 55 seconds. So for alpha here, I get that it's going to be a negative 2.85 radians per second squared. So um, let me clear out some of this stuff up here. This out. So I'm going to leave I there. Let me get back to my drawing. Okay. So now what we're able to do is figure out how much torque that requires to accelerate this. So this is still friction. This is I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, it is uh, alpha. All right, so we know the alpha is friction. We know I, we've got to find how much torque. So I got torque equals uh, alpha is negative 2.85.00137. So the torque I get from the friction is a negative 0.0039 newton meters. All right. So now when we're talking about overall, let's talk about this summation of the torques on the grinding wheel has to equal alpha i. We know the alpha has to equal this, the 36.66. That's the acceleration we want. We know i. We've had that from the beginning. Now, there are more than one torques acting on it. There's friction, and there's the motor of the wheel. So there's torque of friction plus torque applied equals Alpha I. So let's clear this out. Oh, sorry, race. So let's go ahead and draw it again. The friction torque is, we just found, negative 0 0.0039 plus torque applied. The acceleration we need to get is 36.66. From here, we got that from there. Ah, uh, what was that? I erased it. We use it though. It's point zero zero one three seven. Solve for T A, the torque applied, and you'll get point zero five four newton meters. Sorry, that got sloppy. A lot of work to do on that one. A lot of work to do on that one. All right, so that should make sense. We found I, pretty easy. We found the acceleration down here that it needed to undergo to, you know, uh, complete what it's asking us. We found the acceleration due to friction right here. We found the torque that friction would get. And then we found that friction and, and the applied of the motor with the torques applying on it so that we could find how much torque applied to give us this acceleration. All right. What was that, number five? So number six? Number six. Mm -hmm. A merry-go-round 
accelerates from rest to 0.68 radians per second in 24 seconds. Assuming the merry-go-round is a uniform disk of radius 7 meters and a mass of 31,000 kilograms, calculate the net torque required to accelerate it. All right, so first thing we got to do again is find acceleration. We know from rest, so initial is going to be zero. Final is going to be, what is that? 0.68 radians per second. Four seconds. I want to find alpha. I got final, initial, final is 0.68, initial is zero, alpha time is 24 seconds. Alpha is going to be pretty small here. It's going to be what? 0 0.028 radians per second. There's our alpha. We want to know the torque required. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a merry-go-round to be a cylinder at the center. So I need to find I. My I equation is one half m r squared. Uh, what I got? I equals one half. This is pretty big. What's that? Thirty-one thousand. R is seven meters here to be when you plug it in a calculator seven hundred fifty nine thousand five hundred kilogram meters squared right. now I need to know torque so I know the summation of the torques equal So the net torque is equal to 0 0.028, which is acceleration, and I is 759500. So plugging in my calculator, I'm going to get 21,266 newton meters. That's number six. Seven. It says, oh, let me flip here. Get my work. Uh, a centrifuge rotor has a moment of inertia, so it gives us I. Moment of inertia of 4.25 times 10 to the negative second kilogram per square. How much energy is required to bring it from rest to, so I know it's initial, final is, what was it, where's it at? 9,750 revolutions per minute, one minute, 60 seconds, one rev, so when you do that, convert it to 1,021 per second. All right. So what I got here. So what we're going to do here is uh, it says how much energy. So uh, rotational kinetic energy. Equals one half I omega squared. So kinetic energy initial equals zero because initial velocity is zero. Now I can plug in the five. Ke equals one half I four point two five times ten to the negative second and oh, I ran out of room here. One thousand twenty one. You multiply that too. You then your calculator, your final kinetic energy is uh, 22,151.9 joules. Is that it? How much energy? Yeah. 
So someone just asked how much energy. Good. So we're done. So it requires 22,151.9 joules. All right. Cool that. A merry-go-round has a mass of 1,640 kilograms and a radius of 7.5 meters. How much net work is required to accelerate it from rest to a rotation rate of one revolution per eight seconds? Assume it's a solid, solid cylinder. All right, so solid cylinder is going to be add equals uh, one half m r squared. First, mass is one six four zero. R is seven point five squared. So when I plug that in, I'm gonna get forty six thousand one twenty five kilograms meter squared. So now I have the moment of inertia of the merry go round. All right, so. Kind of the same thing here, except it wants to know how much net work. So we have to remember that work equals change in energy. So if I can find kinetic energy initial, which in this case is going to be zero, because it starts from rest, right? How much from rest? Yeah, so. Final velocity says rotation rate of one revolution per eight seconds. So I can do one divided by eight. Is that, is that what I did? Yeah, one divided by eight gives me 0. 0.125 revolutions per second, which then converts to 0. 0.78 radians per second. So that's my final. So I go to kinetic energy final equals one half uh, I squared. I is 46, 1, 2, 5. And final velocity is 0.78 squared. Put that in, your final is going to be. 1,400, or 14,000. So the change in energy here is just going to be 14,000. So my work is equal to 14,000. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Just getting used to that kinetic energy equation, rotational kinetic energy equation. All right, last one. So a uh, rotating uniform cylinder, cylindrical platform of mass 220 and a radius of 5.5 meters slows down from 3.8 revolutions per second to rest in 16 seconds. When the motor is disconnected, calculate the power output of the motor required to maintain a steady, steady speed of 3.8 revolutions per second. So we're looking for power here. And what we need to remember from this is what the basic definition of power is. Force times distance, right? Anybody agree with that? So, what's... Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, oh I messed that up. I messed that up. Uh, how did I clear that? Undo, undo. Power is work divided by time, right? Sorry, I was uh, thinking one step ahead. Work is equal to force times distance, so I basically just plugged in for work here, distance divided by time is force times velocity. So if I were to rewrite this for our terms, the force is going to be torque, and the velocity is going to be angular velocity. So that's the equation that we're going to use to calculate power. So you know, a good thing to start with is find I, because that's what we need to do. It gives us enough information. It's a cylinder, so I got I equals uh, one half m r squared. I equals one half the mass is two twenty. R is five point five. 
prepared. When I plugged it in for the calculator, what did I, what did I get? 33, uh, 3,327. 3,327 kilograms meters squared. So now I got the uh, moment of inertia, right? So what I can find is the acceleration that it undergoes due to friction because that the motor to keep it at a constant speed is going to have to keep that same acceleration except in the opposite direction to keep it moving at a constant speed so that way the net torque is going to be zero right so if i can figure out the torque i know already know the velocity right it's uh three point revolutions per second once we convert it we're fine so let's go ahead and find the acceleration so i know it's going to start at uh, and it's fine on zero because it's going to rest. Uh, initial is 3.8 rev per second, which converts to what's my conversion? 23.9 radians per second, and it stops in 16. I need to find alpha. So again, I'm going to use this. I don't know, 0, 23.9 plus alpha, 16 seconds. The acceleration is going to be negative 1.49 radians per second squared. All right. So what I know there is this. I know that the acceleration caused by the friction is this for the for the uh what is it the uniform cylindrical platform to stay at a constant angular velocity i'm going to need a positive acceleration of 1.49 applied by the motor okay so what we can know is if i'm going to find torque No I, and I know this alpha has to be there. So the torque has to be equal to uh, I is three three two seven. Alpha is one point four nine. So that's going to give me a positive torque. That's going to cancel out the torque applied by applied by this. So the torque applied by the motor is going to equal four thousand. 957.9 newton meters. So this is a torque applied by the motor to counteract and equal out that negative acceleration. So I can find the power by doing this. The torque applied by the motor is 4,009. And the speed I need to hold is 23.9 radians per second. So I plugged it in the power. I'm going to get 115,495 watts. All right, there's your uh, answer key to the rotational dynamics practice problems. I uh, hope that helped.